This is the 2026 Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. With a starting price of $185,000, this is one of the fastest road and track cars that money can buy, period. And as if that's not enough, these cars, rated by Chevy for 1,064 horsepower, have been found to be making even more power than we initially thought. This particular example that we'll be taking a look at today is actually the 3LZ, which is the top trim, in addition to having the ZTK package which is a heavy track focused package that makes this thing even more ridiculous than it already comes from Chevy. Let's get into it. The first place we have to start is the engine, which you can open through your trusty Corvette key fob here. You go ahead and push the button twice, and that'll go ahead and allow you to lift this rear latch, exposing the ZR1's engine. Now, this is a pretty spectacular engine. It is true that it is technically based on the LT6 engine found in the Z06 Corvette, but if you talk to the Corvette engineers, they'll tell you that really the only thing that was kept is the bottom end. Everything from there up for the ZR1 has been entirely entirely changed for this car, including the fitment of the largest turbos ever fitted to a passenger road car. They are 76 millimeters in diameter, and they are mounted inside of the exhaust manifold, which is some incredibly cool engineering to make everything fit in what is a relatively compact package here in the middle of the ZR1. Now, talking about the details in particular, that means that this engine here is a twin turbocharged 5.5 liter V8. It's rated by Chevy for 1,064 horsepower and 828 pound-feet of torque. And the cool part about that, in case you forget that number, they actually have a plaque here that's kind of visible through the windows in the top that actually shows you that information about your engine on top, including your compression ratio, which is kind of a cool detail on this particular car. But those numbers don't actually tell the whole story. You see, in this modern day and age, we know better enough that those numbers are just numbers at that. And some people have actually dynoed their brand new 20 26 ZR1s and found that some cars are making as much as 1,050 horsepower at the wheels. Now, obviously, that number is kind of subject to vary. There's a little bit of an engine lottery. Some are going to make more than other Corvettes out there. But what that does tell us, if we take that at face value, 1,050 horsepower at the wheels, which is the corrected figure, means that's approximately 1,200 horsepower or so at the crank, give or take, depending on how much you're actually getting pulled out of this engine. So it's fascinating to hear that this car is making way more power than even Chevy has advertised. In fact, those numbers are essentially the minimum for what this car is going to be making at the crank, and that is really cool to know. Now, what does that translate to? Well, it's then paired with an 8-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission, which delivers power to the rear wheels only on the regular ZR1, with, of course, the 1250 horsepower ZR1X on the way. They just haven't been delivered yet, or at least at the time of making this video. What that gives you is a 3,700-pound car, which is rather rather heavy, but obviously that performance makes up for it. In fact, according to Chevy, the performance figures that they provide are 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds. That is hypercar territory. A quarter mile in under 10 seconds, specifically 9.6 seconds, with a top speed of 233 miles per hour. Now that is admittedly if you don't get the aero package, which this car has, but still insane to think about. The other thing, and this isn't the most American figure, is also the Nürburgring time, which for this car is 6 minutes, 50 seconds, and change. The important part about that is it's one of the first American cars to break into the sub-7 minute mark. That's incredibly fast for the Nürburgring, and it actually beat the Mustang GTD, the first car to do it, with a faster time. And even in various other comparisons that you see with these cars on track, the ZR1 is consistently the fastest car out there, which speaks volumes of this, not just as a fast, straight line American car, but as one of the best sports cars that money can buy, period. Now, moving on to the funnier note, let's talk fuel economy. We've talked about the fun performance figures. This thing actually features an EPA-rated 12 miles per gallon city, 18 miles per gallon highway, and 14 miles combined. It's not very fuel efficient, especially if those turbos are being spooled up, the result of which on its best day, getting that full highway 18 miles per gallon, it features an 18.5 gallon fuel tank. That means maybe you get 333 miles out of a tank of gas. If you're having fun with it, which we know you will be if you're driving a ZR1, then you're not gonna get anywhere near close to that. In fact, you're gonna get significantly less, but this is incredibly cool. And the engine itself called the LT7 is just such a special thing to see in here and created a crazy package from Chevy that makes even more horsepower than they've led us to believe. 
So next, let's take a closer look at the exterior of the ZR1. And there is a lot to unpack here. Obviously, it's taken the C8's design language and expanded upon it tenfold, adding more wedges and aggressive aerodynamic flavors, all while taking advantage of that mid-engine layout to much controversy of diehard Corvette enthusiasts. But let's talk about everything that they've done here to make this car more practical and effective as a race car, if you will, for the road. First of all, starting at the front, there are some options on this car that are going to make it stand out from some of the other ZR1s that are available. And that's going to be things like the carbon fiber aero package and the ZTK package specifically are going to be some of the biggest ulterior changes, let's say, here as compared to other ZR1s you may find on the road. That carbon fiber aero package adds things like this very aggressive front splitter here, but more importantly, the dive planes that you see here on the side of the car. The main thing with that carbon fiber aero package that'll set you back a cool $10,000 on your ZR1 is you're going to get that back in terms of track performance, which some say could pay back in dividends. Additionally, the carbon fiber can carry over here into the central inlets, even found on top of the frunk here. But more importantly, the really cool part is how all that arrow works together. Obviously, you have a tremendous amount of downforce here in the front, but also in the center there. That air goes through the center there, not just additional cooling for the car, but then out the top vents, giving you additional downforce. The downside of that is you actually lose your your frunk space, meaning that the ZR1 is not nearly as storage effective as the regular C8 Corvette, but I think the performance is definitely worth the sacrifice. The things like the headlights are still the same that you'd find on other models like the Z06 Corvette. As you come around to the side of the car here, you can start to see some of the more aggressive options, things like the carbon fiber mirrors and additional of the flash black that you'll see. But then more importantly, we have to talk about what's going on underneath the car. You do get fully independent suspension, as of course we expect to see on a modern performance car like this. But here with the ZTK package, there's some really cool stuff going on. First of all, these wheels, fantastic in this Corvette blue metallic. They're forged aluminum wheels and they are 20 inches in diameter. But the really cool part is actually what's going on underneath. Because this car has the ZTK package that gives you a brake upgrade in the form of these absolutely massive Alcon disc brakes. That upgrade turns these into a 10 piston caliper. And Alcon is a really interesting brand. If you haven't heard of them before, that's usually because it's the stuff found on race cars, not necessarily street cars. And you combine that with the fact that you now also have your carbon ceramic disc brakes with that iconic crackle that you see throughout the rotor, which is also a two-piece rotor. All of this that you hear about going on underneath this car is the type of stuff that you usually only heard on exotic premium foreign cars or even race cars. And yet here it is on a Corvette. Additionally, the ZTK package also gets you that adaptive suspension, which helps to run through your various drive modes, giving you that track mode to really stiffen up the suspension and make this car dominate the ring, if you will. And then, of course, lastly, is the fact that it has these Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2Rs. That is another interesting feature on an American Corvette, but that is part of the ZTK package. As it's more track oriented, it makes sense that it would come with a very aggressive tire like what you see there. With that, let's go ahead and continue down here. Now the ZR1, of course, while it's not necessarily a roadster in this case, still has that removable top that you see here with its separate panets so you can knock it off, give yourself the target top, in integrated carbon fiber with addition to the stripes on this particular car. But then as you come to this section of the car, this is without a out one of the most interesting sections. Not only do you have lots of carbon fiber, which helps to enhance the look, especially the contrast of this Arctic white, but you have all of this different functionality here. Obviously, again, some of this or all of this really is going to be for cooling and intake. So I believe this is the engine intake here in the back. You have some radiators here in the side, not just for the engine per se, but some of the various cooling elements that you'll find on this car are also for the transmission and even the rear limited slip differential. So it makes sense that that we need all of that to be cooled. And then this very last guy here may actually be helping with additional things like brake ducts, for example, that you'll find throughout the car to help cool those absolutely massive brakes. You also get your ZR1 band, which is nice and hollow to give it a cool effect. And then of course the ZR1 also carries over the Z06 wide body. So everything is just flared and from the right angle, it looks even more aggressive depending on how you're looking at it. In back here, we also have these massive, massive tires. These are actually 21 inches, meaning they are again a 
is one inch slightly different stance from the front, giving it a nice aggressive look, but also considerably wider. You're running 345s here in the back, which is a very, very wide tire. Is it enough to put that over 1,000 horsepower? No, I don't think so. If you take your traction control off, this is just going to spin the rear tires. But hey, on track and with the right tire, maybe even racing slicks, you could get a lot out of it. Next, we have this absolutely massive wing. As you can tell, this is also part of that carbon fiber aero package. Now, this wing is how you're going to set a fast track time. However, that comes at the cost of top speed. By opting for the aero package, technically, Chevy doesn't give you really an exact figure, but they will tell you that technically that 233 top speed that the car is quoted for is no longer possible because it's drag limited from things like the downforce which i believe can produce over 1200 pounds of downforce on this car which is crazy it also serves as a lunch table for your burgers or you can sleep on it technically if you wanted to Coming to the back here, we have some cool classic elements of the ZR1. The way that they designed this back sloping piece is supposed to be reminiscent of the 1963 Corvette split window, as you can see there. It also gives you a peek to your LT7, while also having functional heat extraction vents located in the back. As you come to the back back of the car here, some interesting things I want to point out are that the actual stanchions for the wings themselves are made of carbon fiber, which is pretty cool to look at. But then everything below this, minus the quad exhaust, looks pretty standard for the C8 Corvette. It all seems pretty normal with backup cameras, but then even, of course, the way that everything exits out the side, even some of your turbulent air from the wheel wells, all of it looks pretty normal for the C8 Corvette. It's just this presence that it has with the wide body, the wing, and of course, the aggressive exhaust for that V8, which is now turbocharged. So moving on to the interior, just like other Corvettes, you have your Bowling Green sticker, but then here on the inside, you get the benefits of the update for 2026. So long gone are all the buttons that used to be located in the center of the car, and now you have the updated interior style, but with all the new ZR1 flair. So you still have the Squircle steering wheel here in the middle, but of course you get ZR1 badging here in the bottom, and then even here in the back of the car. There's some other cool options in this particular case. This car has a black interior, but with all of these cool, I believe it's Santorini blue accents, the stitching here in the center, which pops from the black and looks fantastic, while also having the seatbelts themselves, of course, an iconic C8 Corvette available option. You also get things like the ZR1 door plaques, lots of carbon fiber here in the doors, which then wraps around the rest of the dash to give you a very cool, aggressive, racy look. You also get things like the available Bose sound system that's in this one, which is a 14 speaker system. It sounds incredible and really pumps the bass. More of the blue here in the door. The contrast is just incredible. Mixed with all of your available power functions, including your power release for the door, and then your automatic doors for both the driver and the passenger, and even your power mirror adjustments. Getting into some of the other details, the floor mats themselves are fun with the Corvette logos and even the Corvette racing skull there in the middle. And as we take a look at the rest of the infotainment and ZR1-isms, you have things like the Squircle steering wheel with its carbon fiber paddle shifters, the Z button here, which is essentially a joker button that can be programmed to run various functions that maybe take multiple menu items to set up. But more importantly, the other cool things is the fact that you have the buttons here in the back, which actually help with the front lift for the car, which this car comes with that can easily lift the front nose at one touch of a button, about two inches or so, to clear anything that might be in the way. The other cool part is this little screen over here on the side. This is essentially how you're going to manage a lot of the aggressive drive modes. So by missing with these buttons here, you can actually see some of the various drive modes that are available on the car for setting it up on the track, for example, disabling the traction control. You also have the traction button and then this little rocket ship button of which is kind of an Easter egg on this car. Not only do you have lots of Zora references, but also the little rocket ship is your launch control button. So if you were to set that up here, you have several different options here, including an auto mode with the ability to th set things like the various revs and even, of course, uh, change the traction control on this car, depending on what you want and set it up to whatever specific environment you're in. You also get a heads up display. The main digital gauge right in front of you is, of course, adjustable as well. And you also get this screen over here, which has things like your car play that you can adjust and your smartphone connectivity, along with your heated, ventilated seats and other infotainment. Some other cool touches are also the fact that you get 
get this. Not only is your mirror a regular mirror, but you can see currently it's actually set up for the camera function. That means that you can actually see out the back of the car, which is kind of plagued by that split window. So the visibility is not the best. It does give you a window to your engine, which is pretty cool, but the camera is a much better system for the low profile of this car. The other cool part is it comes with modern camera systems to even check like the front. So that way you're not damaging any of that carbon fiber aero package when parking the car. Everything about it is very, very intuitive, upgraded in a very practical sense, giving you an insane value for money. The overall build quality that you see in the interior is also quite impressive. It comes with all sorts of cool features. Interestingly, perhaps is the two wireless chargers, one here in the center and in the back of the car, just like previously and still getting the Targa latch, as you see there with all the available buttons and even your garage programmality. So what you get here essentially is a car who is very driver focused, if you couldn't tell with all the gauges angled at the driver, Lots of updates for 2026, including the ZR1 specifics that make this just a really special car. And it feels so well built, especially compared to other exotics, which this car will no doubt be compared against regularly. But it has a lot of cool Corvette specific touches that make it very practical and usable despite being insanely ridiculous performance wise. So there you have it. That is a quick look at the 2026 Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. I think I speak for everyone when I say that this car has exceeded everyone's expectations for what they thought was possible from an American-made sports car. Corvette specifically has long been regarded as America's sports car, and going mid-engine has been highly controversial, especially for diehard Corvette fans, but I think they made the right decision, and I think the numbers say it for themselves. The specs on paper of this car are utterly ridiculous, but then they've backed it up with the actual performance on the drag strip, on track, just fun driving, and then even at the Nürburgring of all places, not really common ground for an American car to go improve itself. But then, from a road car perspective, I think people would be pleasantly surprised as they see these cars in person and spend some time looking at them, to even getting to interact with not just the ZR1 per se, but even the C8 Corvette as a whole. The build quality and other aspects of the car are really going to drive home at a fantastic bargain, not just in terms of performance, but the entire package that you get when you purchase one of these Corvettes. The ZR1 in particular, one thing I did want to mention and show you in the video that I didn't mention earlier, is actually some of the Easter eggs as well. The first ones that really caught my eye was, of course, the Zora Arcus Duntov side profile logo, found both on the windshield and on the back window of the 63 split window design. Zora, of course, being the father of the Corvette and now, of course, all of these Zora themed elements like the ZTK package and even the rumored name of the upcoming ZR1 and high performance Corvettes. So a nice nod to some Corvette history, but it doesn't actually stop there. If you continue looking throughout the car and you have your wits around you in terms of what's available, you'll find all sorts of Corvette logos everywhere, which is a very prideful, wonderful thing to see on any car when it's covered in badges, but also if you're familiar with the Corvette brand, you might actually notice the Corvette racing skull. You'll find it in places like the actual bottom of the rear trunk, and you'll also find it on the floor mats inside the cabin, and it's kind of a cool, fun piece of Corvette's history, not only being one of the best sports cars on the road, but also It's just wonderful to see the entire history of it. But with that, that is the end of the video. If you enjoyed it and could leave me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. Consider getting subscribed for content like this in the future. And of course, comment down below letting me know what you think about the brand new 2026 ZR1 or if you're even more excited for the ZR1X and everything that these owners could potentially do with these cars in the future. The performance, I think, is just going to be ridiculous, especially once people start tuning them and modifying and even taking it on themselves to go and experiment on different tracks throughout the world. With that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.